Deku, inheritor of one for all and successor to All Might. And gone, the islander turned hunter. Everyone has aspirations for something, whether it's to be the best at something or to help as many people as possible. For some, being a hero is exactly that, whether you are gifted to be one to strive to be one, anyone can be a hero, and these two are prime examples that no matter who you are, no matter your shape and size, you can be a hero. Between these two, which one will prove to be the better heroine? Will Deku prove he is deserving of being the next successor to the all for one quirk, or will Gon showcase why he will be the next best hunter? Find out today, because only one can survive in the arena of death. A world of superpowers is only one we can dream of, but if everyone had superpowers, would that still make us special? In a world where everyone can be super, would anybody truly be super? Well the world of My Hero Academia sort of has a solution to that. In this world, due to a mutation that developed into humans long ago, 80% of the human population are gifted with unique powers given to them at birth, with the 20% being born without a mutation that prevents them from being able to develop powers at all. That's where we meet our protagonist, Izuku Midoriya ever since he was a kid has always wanted to be a hero, a beacon of hope to inspire others and help those in need, looking up to his idol and inspiration, the number one hero in the world, All Might. Unfortunately he fell into the 20% and was not gifted to have a quirk, to which he was given the name Deku by his quote-unquote friend Bakugo, which translates to good for nothing, wow what ass. Despite this heartbreaking realization, Izuku never once gave up on his dream, in spite of this truth he still wanted to be a hero. In a heroic act that nearly costed his life if it weren't for All Might stepping in, he proved to All Might has what it takes to be a hero, his determination, desire to help others no matter what and willpower was what convinced All Might to take Deku under his wing and to inherit the legendary quirk from him, one for all. Although at first, even with buffing himself up, he couldn't use his quirk without severely damaging his body, so Izuku by proving he has what it takes was given the chance to enroll at UA, a superhero high school meant to teach young heroes how to better manage their powers and how to be a hero and obtain their hero license. It was here where Izuku chose his hero name, Deku which also has an alternate abbreviation that can mean, who can do anything. One for All is a unique quirk in nature and is unlike others, its basic abilities allows the user to generate and output immense levels of strength releasing extremely powerful attacks that can completely shatter giant mechs, buildings, and even with a flick of his finger can create shockwaves capable of forming massive craters into infrastructures. Although Deku can't use 100% of his power carelessly without ripping his body apart, which is why he found a way around that. By harnessing this power across his entire body evenly, he is able to generate a certain percentile of power across his whole body without risking breaking his bones and tearing his muscles, he dubs this technique full cowling. This gives him a huge stat buff where his strength, durability, and speed are greatly enhanced to allow him to fight much more efficiently all while still generating immense power. Deku even has another alternate method for combat, where if he is worried about his arms being ineffective or being too badly damaged, he will just use his legs and focus on kicking, this style is an opposite to All Might's rapid punching style, one which he dubbed shoot style. This actually allows Deku to last longer in combat and hit harder considering the muscle mass between arms and legs being wildly different. A large number of One for All's attacks are named after US states, truly the most patriotic thing for a Japanese citizen to do. One for All isn't just a power boost quirk, you see One for All has a unique property that allows users to pass down One for All to others, along with the previous user's quirk. All Might was only the seventh inheritor of One for All, making Deku the eighth. This means Deku also has access to the other quirks that belonged to previous users of One for All. This includes Black Whip which creates tendrils made of energy that he can use to whip, snare, and tie up, Smoke Screen which allows him to create large masses of smoke, Danger Sense which grants minor precognition, Fajin which allows him to store kinetic energy over time to release whenever he wants, the ability to float, and Gear Shift which lets the user control the inertia and trajectory of objects. Deku as a hero has accomplished a lot of feats, fighting villains like Overhaul, Stain, Muscular, and Shigaraki numerous times has allowed him to not only grow more powerful over time, but even accomplish insane feats. He even has been able to reach All Might's 100% power with no recoil to boot. All Might is capable of generating punches so powerful that it can alter the weather across an entire cityscape, and stop a colossal metallic cube from Wolfram along with Deku. 
Considering the size and possible density of that cube, All Might and Deca would have to be delivering power close to 900 gigatons each. The cube itself was also outputting an attack the both Deku and All Might were pushing against with their attacks throughout the fight, an attack worth 1.7 teratons of TNT. Shigaraki at one point was even confirmed to have reached levels akin to All Might at his prime, and while we don't know how powerful he was at his prime precisely, we can calculate that it's possible prime All Might could have possibly output 52 teratons of TNT. Deku is no slouch in speed either, he can keep up with lighting based attacks, keep up with many hypersonic characters, and even keep up with Shigaraki who can outright catch laser fire. With all that, even against the pressure that All For One has laid upon the world, Deku with the help of All Might's kindness has been able to exceed the odds, and Deku with the help of his friends and teammates proved that the new generation of heroes is a special one, and Deku will soon be the next best successor of All For One, not just for him, but for all mankind. Overall, Deku is a kid with incredible power and training. He is a skilled tactician and strategist, but using too much power can cause damage to his body. One for all. In a world full of discovery, treasures, and worth, it is no surprise there will be people that will dedicate themselves to being able to hunt for glory, with some being noble enough to use those skills to help others even. The Hunters Association is a non-government association that tests and licenses hunters for that exact purpose. They seek the best among the best within humanity's capabilities. With this license they can go just about anywhere in the world and do almost anything. Man, why can't real life exams be this exciting? Oh nice I've done hundreds of exams in college for 5 years and all I get is a piece of paper that says good job, can't even guarantee a job, what a rip off. Gon was born into being a prodigy, although not like it was given to him on a silver platter. His father was known as Jing Freaks, one of the most famous and renowned hunters in the world. Jing left his son in the hands of his grandmother and left Whale Island and never returned again as he planned to, you know because he can somehow predict with every step that your son will be able to take the mantle of becoming the next hunter with the utmost confidence, a totally normal and rational plan. This did infuriate his grandmother and Jing's cousin Mito soon after took custody of Gon, lying to him saying his parents died in an accident to prevent him from knowing how his father basically abandoned him. Gon went on to believe this story until one day he was nearly killed by a fox bear if it wasn't for a man named Kite saving him. Kite reveals that he is an apprentice to Jing and he came to Whale Island to prove himself to his master. With this factoid coming to life, Mito ended up coming clean about Gon's actual family, but rather than being upset, it had actually pushed him to want to become a hunter since he didn't really know what it meant to be one, so the best way to know is to become one. So after catching a massive fish as some kind of right of entry, he joined and took the hunter's exam to become a hunter, and after many tough exams one after another, he passed and became the world's youngest hunter at the age of 12. Gon quickly learned that being a hunter isn't an easy job at all, but he had the toolkit to become a great hunter. Like many hunters, he has the ability to control energy known as Nin, aka one's own aura. This allows for some basic abilities like having superhuman levels of strength, agility, and durability, animal-like senses, and incredibly potent reactive senses that lets him sense incoming attacks. It also grants the users a healing factor, while it won't help him grow back in arm per se, it can allow him to heal from other types of injuries and slow down biological attacks like withstanding a poison potent enough to paralyze him for days. Nen users can use their Nen depending on how much they have, and Gon seems to have gotten lucky in the gene pool because he has a lot of it, and Gon can utilize more the angrier he gets. There are six types of Nen and Gon has three of them, transmutation allows for the changing in aura to the way the user sees fit, such an example would be changing it into an element like lightning, emission allows the user to separate Nen from their body and use it as a, an energy projectile, and enhancement allows the user to boost their strength and power. Gon also has Hatsu, which is the physical appearance of one's Nen. Gon's is called Heja Enkin, a dot K dot A, rock paper scissors. Fitting since his three versions of Heja Enkin fits his three known Nen. Heja Enkin scissors focuses on transmutation in which he can create energy blades like scissors to cut through objects, Heja Enkin paper focuses on emission which allows him to shoot out focused beams from his hands, and his last one Heja Enkin rock focuses on enhancement which basically enhances the potency of his punches to extreme levels. 
Although Gon can best utilize his nin when he enters a state of immense anger, which allows him to accelerate his nin to ridiculous levels, here he enters his limitation form, where he is extremely buffed up, somehow aged several years, and can emit power so great that he can launch others with basic punches so high in the air that they are airborne for minutes on end, also his hair grows too for some reason. Gon throughout his time as a hunter has accomplished amazing things such as being able to leave gigantic cracks on walls with his aura alone, scale to other characters like Killua who can shatter trees, fight on PAR with Chimera ants, and withstand an explosion from them worth 3 kilotons. He can even contend with other Nen users capable of making town-sized craters worth 18 megatons of TNT. Gon is also capable of tagging lightning timers and users rather easily. Being able to keep up with Killua who can generate lightning. With all of his adventures he has been in, and every enemy he has faced, Gon has triumphed through it all and was able to prove to his father and the whole world why he is the best hunter there is. Overall, while Gon may be the one of the youngest members of his group, he is able to take a lot of punishment and keep going. He is calm and collected, but his judgment can be clouded. So now, we get strong, and we find him. We're gonna go save Kite! Alright. Let's get ready for combat. This battle will take place in Jakku City, and there's no prep time. With that being said, it's time to find out who will survive in the arena of death. Now that my work is done here, they'll have to pick him up in an hour. Hey. Huh? I saw what you did to that guy earlier, and you're going to pay for what you did. I recommend you leave her now. Hey, are you okay, madam? No problem. It's my job, after all. Oh, no, kid. Listen. You don't understand. Oh, I do understand it perfectly. You're going to wish you never messed with that guy. Hey, I'm trying to tell the truth here. In your dreams, villain. Boy, this guy's tough enough. Tough enough. Sorry, but you put this on yourself. Wait, what? That does it. I've tried to be reasonable, but you wouldn't listen. Now, it's time to show you what I really am. Doesn't matter how stronger you're able to be, I will fight for justice, freedom, and peace like I've always had. I will never give up on that for the city and for the innocent. That was something. Damn it. I could really use a drink. Well, the hero beats the hunter. Now the results of this unfortunately are rather one-sided. While Gon possibly holds an edge in experience and being more naturally untuned with his abilities, Deku takes literally every other category. He is thousands times stronger than Gon even considering his best feats vs Deku's worst feats, he far exceeds him in speed, and is far more skilled with his quirks than Gon is with his nin when it comes to variety, technique, and intellect. Gon is simple minded in his combat while Deku is a lot more hyper analytic, so Deku can take advantage of that and read Gon in seconds and understand his abilities better than Gon can. Even as the best hunter, Gon couldn't go from zero to hero. The winner, is Deku. You gotta call the who?